In this demonstration, I will explain how to use these project boards. Other names for these project boards can be BIM board or breadboard. So I have three different types here. I have a very large project board for some very large and complicated circuits that you would like to build. It has some external banana jacks that you can attach to various points of the circuit board. And then there are some smaller ones here. No matter what type of project board you have, there are many similarities amongst them all. This project board has some red and blue lines painted on it. These red and blue lines mean that all of these little square holes all the way across, just above the red line, are all connected together. The square holes just below the blue line are all connected together, but yet there's no connection between this row of square holes and this row of square holes. If we take a look here, we have these little groups of five. They're all connected together, but there's no connection between the next group of five. Let's take, let's take a closer look at the back side of this project board. I've taken the protective covering off so that you can have a clear idea of what and how everything is connected together. Remember those red and blue lines that went across the horizontal length of the board? Well, here we have a channel or bus that is connected all the way across from one end to the other, but yet this channel is not connected to the second channel. Here you can remember I was talking about the groups of five square holes. So here we have a channel or bus that would allow those five holes to be connected together but yet not be connected to the next group of five holes. Let's zoom in on this. So this is a close-up view of these channels or buses that connect all the square holes together. Let's take one of the channels out of the board so you can see what they actually look like. So this is the piece that I removed from this group of five holes. So let's uh, take a closer look at this little metal piece. So this is what this little metal channel looks like from the back side and you can see as I rotate it, it has five little fingers. And there are actually two sets of them so that when we push a part into the holes, little square holes, those fingers will catch onto the part and make an electrical connection. You'll notice that these two project boards are very similar, but yet there is a very minor difference between the two of them. Notice these red and blue lines are solid all the way across and all these little square holes just above the red line, they were all connected together. That's not true with this project board right here. Although we don't have any red or blue lines, You'll notice that the spacing between the groupings of five holes are the same except for when we get into the middle where there's a little wider spacing. So what that means is, is that this group of five holes here is not connected to this group of five holes. And this group of five is not connected to this group. But yet all these Five groups of five are all connected together here, and this group of five groups of five are connected together, but not connected between these two rows. And that'll be the same on this end of the board. So if you want to make a 
solid connection straight across the horizontal plane of the board, what you can do is you can actually cut some little chunks of wire like this and insert them into the board. Like that. So red for positive and black for negative if that's what you'd like to do. There we go. So now I have all of these square holes connected all the way across. When you're working with resistors on your project board, and if you're getting your resistors in larger quantities, you'll often get them in such a way that you have this paper strip glued on to each end of the resistor and forming a large uh, coil, if you want to call it that. So this is just for machine loading when they uh, auto-populate circuit boards. What I end up doing is I take my side cutters and I cut right up next to the paper so that I don't get that glue going into the board. Giving me a resistive or intermittent connection. So I'll just discard that. Now I have my resistors ready to use in the project board. When I want to connect the resistors into the project board, I'll grab my resistor and I'll just bend the leads into a U-shape. Just like that. Not anything special. I don't even need to use any tools to do it. Now to connect a part into the project board, you just slide the lead into one of the square holes and if necessary, use a pair of needle nose pliers to push in the leads like this. Now let's take a look as to how we should connect resistors on the project board. The circuit diagram shows two resistors connected in series, R1 and R2. There is a common connection between R1 and R2. On the project board, R1 and R2 have a serious problem. We do not have that common connection between R1 and R2. There is an open connection and therefore this circuit will not work. Now our problem has been resolved on the project board. The common connection between R1 and R2 has been made in a group of five holes of which two are being used by the component leads. Now I have a series circuit consisting of four resistors, R1, R2, R3, and R4. The resistors are currently connected on the project board, but we have a little bit of a problem. The connection between R1 and R2 has an open connection, the connection between R2 and R3 has an open connection, and the connection between R3 and R4 has an open connection. Therefore, this circuit will not work. Now I'm showing one possible correct connection for this series combination. The connection between R1 and R2 is made in a common group of five holes, along with the connection between R2 and R3, which is also made in a common group of five holes, and also the connection between R3 and R4 is made in another common group of five holes. This is an example of how not to connect a resistor in the project board. Both leads of this resistor are in the same common group of five holes. Therefore, this resistor is now short circuit and will have a total resistance of zero ohms regardless of the resistor value. In this example, I'm connecting four resistors in parallel. In the circuit diagram, you will notice the left side of the resistor symbol is labeled with the numeral 1. 
On the project board, I'm going to select a grouping of five holes. Then I will insert one lead of each resistor into four of the five holes, making that common connection where I see the one on the circuit diagram. I will then find another grouping of five holes and insert the remaining four leads into four of the five holes on the project board. Now I have all four resistors connected in parallel properly. In this example, I have a series and parallel combination connected together. The parallel combination of R3 and R4 is connected in series with R2 and R1. When building the circuit on the project board, I basically build the circuit much the same way as I see it on the circuit diagram. 